in a moment we'll show you how to release these fish and even show you a fish eye view as well as a few techniques to getting it right but first let's take a look at how to tag let's find out how to do it and why it is so important tagging isn't difficult to do there's just a few key things you need to learn about to carry out the tagging in the right way so the whole idea of tagging is trying to get the tag into the fish without causing it any harm and so that tag stays in that fish for as long as possible. There are many different tag poles available. This is one here. It extends to around 12 feet in length and it's a very good tag pole. But you can actually make your own as well. This is one here. This is a hand tag that I've made. It's actually made out of a piece of dowel. And all I've done is I've drilled into the end there and set the applicator in with some araldite. The main thing it's got to do is actually just deliver the tag into the side of the fish. So obviously you can have one that's longer, so if you had a dowel pole that was six to eight feet long that would suffice as a perfectly good tagging pole. Or you can have one like this, this can be your emergency tag for if you've got fish at the side of the boat and you can just use this as a hand tag. Things to think about when you're tagging fish are when you pick up your tag pole, look at the tag and make sure it's loaded properly. You see here, this tag isn't on straight here and this tag can just fall off, so what you do is you pull it down tight, make sure it's held just by one, one strand of elastic band, don't put it on too tight. Make sure it can freely move on there and that's ready to go. Make sure that the, the point of the actual applicator is sticking out beyond the tag so that that can actually penetrate the skin of the fish. What we have here is the, the billfish tag. Now this has been in operation since 2002. Uh, we moved to the billfish tag because we found it was the best one for a better retention rate and that's what it's all about here. What you can see is that it's got a, a double barb on the end and it's a nylon tag and this is meant to go just into the muscle of the fish and then that muscle of the fish will grow around it and stay there for as long as possible. Recently we've actually moved to a yellow tag rather than an orange tag and this has helped us with people identifying that tag is on that fish. It's just a lot clearer colour to see. Now what we have here, this is a shark tag. You can see it's quite different than the billfish tag. It's actually got a metal head on it and it's actually quite sharp. The applicator is slightly different. You actually have to slot it in to the end of the tag here. Again, make sure it's straight. Pull it down tight so that it doesn't fall off. And again, make sure that the tag sits beyond the applicator so that that is the first part that makes contact with the fish. Very important. And these tags, to actually get into the shark skin, they take a little bit more force, so you need to be a bit more firm with the jab. And finally, we have this other tag. This is called our general pelagic tag. It's the tag that you use for tuna, wahoo, dolphin fish, species like that. It's a very simple tag. It's a nylon head. It's just got a single barb on it. And this tag, you can load into the applicator like this. Again, make sure it's straight, in position. For the billfish and the shark tags, we actually want to get the tags just into the muscle of the fish. And that just goes into the back, the dorsal area of the fish. The different one is the pelagic tag. Ideally, what we want to do is try and get that tag in behind those bones that actually radiate off the second dorsal fin for the tuna or for something like a dolphin fish, just actually, again, into that area where the, the bones radiate off the dorsal fin. All the information you need to know about the tagging program and how to tag fish is in this brochure. Uh, this is freely available from New South Wales DPI, or you can go to our website and check out the information there. So that is how you do it. But why we do it is just as critical, and we've learned some amazing things from the tagging program along the way. The tagging program covers all the states from WA all the way around the Northern Territory all the way around the East Coast, Victoria and South Australia. The tagging program is about tagging the large um, highly migratory species and learning more and more about where they go, what they do. Um, it's one of the largest tagging programs in the world. We've now got about 375,000 fish tagged under the program and within that we've got about 7,000 recaptures so it's a pretty huge program. The species tagged under the program include all the billfish species, so that's all the marlin, the sailfish and the broadbill swordfish. Then there's all the tuna species and all the shark species. And then we also cover some of the important sport fish such as the dolphin fish, the large mackerels uh, and wahoo. 
The Game Fish Tagging Programme relies on the volunteers of the game fishing sector to um, help us gather all the data. Without the game fishermen, we wouldn't actually have a tagging programme. Some of the amazing recaptures that we've had uh, include a black marlin released off Cairns and recaptured off Costa Rica some four years later. We've had a blue marlin released off Sydney and that was actually recaptured in the Indian Ocean off Sri Lanka. Here recently there was a blue shark recaptured. It was a fish released off South Australia at Port Macdonnell and it swam all the way across the Indian Ocean all the way to South Africa. In that time it had covered about 5,000 nautical miles and it had taken about four years. Participating in the tag and release program, everybody who does that does their bit to help us learn more and more about these amazing uh, unique fish that you can experience out in the open ocean. So I urge people to participate in it, try and learn to do it the right way, fill in your tag details and get them back to us. And in doing so, this helps us understand more about how we can manage these fish. And in managing them properly and better, we can do more to help you catch more. Now, let's look at releasing. Releasing the fish correctly is essential. There's no point in letting them go if they're gonna die. There's a couple of things you've gotta do. If you can get the hook out, do it. If not, just trim the line as short as possible. If you get a fish that's tail wrapped, simply bring it up, turn it around and get the water going through the gills as quickly as you can. If a fish is tied, make sure you swim it. Hold its head underwater, get the water flying over the gills, and give it a chance to revive before you set it free. While you're reviving the fish beside the boat, this makes a perfect opportunity to measure it with a piece of rope that's marked and get an accurate reading on its length. Tag and release is amazing, not just for our sport, but for our understanding of these fish. By providing vital information, we can better manage the fishery, and that's good for the whole community. So this is important stuff, but it's also a lot of fun. The rules and regulations are there, not only to help the fish, but to also give us a fair playing field. So get involved, join a game fishing club, and most importantly, go fishing. <laughs>